morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, indeed. We're picking up with day four of our seven days to becoming a more generous person devotional on the Bible app. There's a link to that in the description if you guys want to follow along with us. And as always, I'm going to read the scripture, then Tori's going to pick up with the Devo. Let's do it. The scripture is Ephesians chapter four, verse 29, and it says this, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. The devotional is titled Generous with Our Encouragement and starts with a quote by Mother Teresa that says this, Kind words can be short and easy to speak, but their echoes are truly endless. Words have power. While they may not physically injure us, they can most definitely harm our spirits. What if we choose to be light bringers in this world that seems to be an ample supply of discouragement? What if we spend our days looking to be courage transplanters in order to brighten someone else's life? So let's make sure that our words and actions bring encouragement instead of tearing people down. Here are some ways that we can deposit kindness into a person's day. First is... If you think a kind thought, say it. This is probably one of the harder things for people to do, either because we don't consistently think nice things about people or we are afraid of how someone will respond. Will they say thank you or will they cast away our kindness because it makes them uncomfortable when they are complimented or encouraged? We can't allow either to deter us from being obedient to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. If we are compelled to encourage someone with our words, let's speak it. Next is if you see a need you can meet, do it. We see people in need every day. It could be the mom with a screaming toddler at the grocery store who left her wallet at home and can't pay for her groceries. If we have the financial means, let's help her. Maybe it's the elderly man who can't seem to pick up something or open a door. Chances are we can help him. Needs do not need to be huge to make a difference in someone's life. We can be a source of encouragement in the smallest of acts. Next is if you see a burden, pray for it. Most of us wish we prayed more for other people, but we just don't. We say, I'll be praying for you, and then we don't and end up feeling awful that we didn't. Instead of saying what we will pray for, let's actually pray We could even pray in that very moment in public. We have no idea what that kind of action will do for someone. Or we could just pray silently and then send a follow-up text saying, I prayed for you today. May we have the eyes to see the opportunities and ways to impact someone today and every day. They are all around us. That's so true. They are They are, how do you say, they are all around us. (laughs) Sorry, I was struggling right there. (laughs) And um, the thing that was kind of pressed into my heart while you were reading is that, do we have the margin to be able to be an encouragement or to be a help for somebody? Yeah. It makes me think of Tori's favorite book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, and how, you know, the the whole kind of main theme of that book is that if the enemy can't get you to sin, he's going to make you too busy to hear and act upon the voice of God. Yeah. And so it just makes me think of the times I felt the the least able to be generous with either my words or my actions or money or whatever, because I'm too busy thinking about my own life. I'm not thinking about other people's life. Mm -hmm. And if you're in that rut, like I so often am, it's important for us to take a step back and think, wow, I've noticed this conversation has been all about me and people love talking about themselves for the most part. Let me ask about you. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? Can I invest into your life? Can I hear about what's going on? And it's like making this intentional effort to say, yeah, I could work that extra 30 minutes or I could go help my spouse with some chores around the house or, or I can go do this or do that. There's a thousand, no, there's like 40 billion things we can do (laughs) to be of help to somebody. But are we leaving room to think about those things and to actually execute on them? Yeah, that's so good. And I feel like this devotional actually paralleled really well with something our friend Kelly posted on Instagram this morning. So I'm just going to read it to you. It's the verse, with their words, the godless destroyed their friends, but knowledge will rescue the righteous. This needs to be a call up. It doesn't say the godless destroyed their enemies with their words, 
No, they destroy their own friends with their words. So how are we talking about the people that we call friends? How are you choosing to think about them? Do you run to prayer for them and truly wish victory for their life? Is celebration and grace your first response or is it criticism? We are meant to fight for unity as the body of Christ. But remember, it may be just that, a fight, but it's worth it. Fight for celebration and for grace. And it just points to the fact that our words truly, like the Bible says, carry the weight of life and death. And I think about children, right? Like it's so easy for children to believe things. Like think about the tooth fairy, think about Santa, like they're believing it. You know, Mm -hmm. they, they believe these things that we tell them. Well, guess what? They also believe what you speak over them, what you say, And we're just the same, you guys. Mm -hmm. The words that we speak over people, it will take root in their life. So are you making them, because sometimes, honestly, I know I'm talking about words, but actions say the same thing sometimes. Are we making them feel loved? Are we making them feel valued? Are we making them feel like we want to serve them? Are we making them feel like a burden in our lives? Mm. And I really think that this is a call up for like unity among believers because when we're united, we can move forward in a way that serves and blesses communities and brings others into the kingdom because because we as Christians, we should look different. We should be the one in public when we see a need meeting it. You never know what that person's day has been like. A kind word, a small gesture that yeah. leads to a conversation <clears throat> or even a friendship. Like you have no idea how that could impact someone. And I know that we're just thinking about how it might impact them that day or that moment, but y'all, it could impact them for eternity. Like this could be that small little moment that reminds them that God is good. That reminds them that God sees them. Like I saw Mm -hmm. a story the other day, my girlfriend was having a terrible, terrible day. And she went into a coffee shop and someone super random gave her a word of encouragement. And it was literally exactly what she needed to hear that day. And it reminded her that God sees her Mm -hmm. and it reminded her that he is good and he is faithful. And It's just like we get the opportunity to be that Mm -hmm. if we'll have the eyes to see it and the courage to speak it. And the time to execute on it. Yeah. Um, The last thing I'll say is, is just like what we talked about yesterday is to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. I have a friend named Daniel who lives out in Los Angeles. And one thing that he would do is whenever he's driving in that LA traffic, he would just start voice noting prayers to people. Mm -hmm. And his, you know, his eyes are open. He's stuck in bumper to bumper traffic. And so what's he going to do? Instead of screaming at the car in front of him, he's going to call out to God in intercession for his community. And so we, we just have to take that initiative. Mm -hmm. And this devotional actually ends with a small call to action that says, encourage someone today. Mm -hmm. And I do think that maybe we should just put like, I don't know, a minute worth of time yeah. on the podcast for all of us, to, whether you just take your phone out and send a text or you send a voice note, whatever that may be. Yeah. Um, Cause I want you to know that this is not like, it, it's a small action that creates big change because mm-hmm. if people who are listening to this podcast do so thousands and thousands of people will be encouraged today. Wow. And so it's one of those things to not belittle as if, Oh, it's just a text. No, it could really brighten someone's day. And who knows, maybe you'll be on the receiving end of a text one day and you're like, wow, that really meant a lot to me. It's really sweet. I love that. You ready to pray sign out? I am. 
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the conviction and the encouragement to encourage others, Father. Would you remind us of the power that our words carry, Father, that we can either speak life over someone or we are speaking death over someone, Father. Would you not allow us to take that lightly, but would you remind us of the weightiness of our words? And Father, I just pray that you'd open our eyes to the different opportunities we have today to encourage our friends, our family, our loved ones, and strangers, Father. Would you help us be your hands and feet here on earth? Would you help us be the reason that people are reminded of your goodness? Father, we love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, God. Amen, God. Amen, y'all. Now is that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to the Lord. Yes, and y'all don't forget that you are God's masterpiece. And don't forget that we love you. We love you guys, and we're talking to you tomorrow. I'll beat the Zane.